I mean, that's fine. I can also be reserved about it. Speaking of which, there's this uh, little evil thing on Netflix. I, don't think, I think this literally just came out. Yeah, no, yeah, I saw it on the internet today. I saw it somewhere. I didn't know it was coming out on Netflix. Um, I thought it was like a movie that was... It is a movie. Um, I know, but I mean, I thought it was like a movie coming out in theaters oh, or yeah. something. I don't um, know. So me and Kate watched it. Uh, it's pretty good if, like, you were ever hoping for, like, another, like, like little Nikki. Like, if you thought little Nikki was funny, but you were weirded out that that was the only one of those movies of, like, it's the son of Satan, but the movie's a comedy, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's really, is it out of a comedy? It looked not like a comedy. I don't know. It is very much a comedy. Oh, very much a comedy. It's very much a comedy. There's a good, like, half of the movie where the main conflict is between the uh, the the wife and the uh, the husband because uh, he is the stepdad in this scenario. Mm-hmm. And um, and the whole time, you like... It's a good movie, The Omen. Yeah, The Omen's a good movie. I like the remake. I don't like the remake. Really? You don't like the remake? I don't like the remake. I like the remake. I like What's His Name a lot. I love that original movie, like, a lot. Oh. Hmm. Because that original movie is so, like, of its time. I guess so. I'm very... I don't know. I don't don't like... They're not polished. I don't like the look of old movies. Oh, you don't... (sighs) Nope, I'm sorry. I'm that guy. (sighs) I'm that guy. (laughs) That makes me want to do, like, the Ric Flair, like, Woo! (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. It's fine. I mean, that if that's your thing, that's because I thing. will. G- I'll give you like maybe it just I don't know, superficial. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't. Well, think I mean, I, if it's unpleasant to your eyes, super, then yeah, like, that's, that's what it is. But I will because I'll give you that the o- the original Omen, I think, has a better plot and has better actors. Yeah. I just can't get over the fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. fuzzy bad 1980s porno look. Well, Kate also. That it has. <laughs> That'd be awesome if there was like just porn happening yeah. in the background. Plus, what's her name? I do like what's I, I like what's his name as a, but what's his name? He's like an icon. Who's the guy that's in the Omen? He's a really famous actor, isn't he? Or he was? Oh, he was. He's a great actor. Um, but I like I really like the dad in the the movie making. Like the guy who plays Ray Donovan. I don't remember. Oh yeah. Who okay, his yeah. name is? I just know. Um, just and like Kate has a similar thing with black and white movies of any kind. Yeah, I've never watched black and white movies. <sighs> I'm not a cinematography nerd That's... like you are. Is there a yeah, word but... for you people like cinephile or pet- cinephile audience? is cinephile. technically the term, but yeah. uh... really adding file on anything just makes it kind of weird. Everyone... <laughs> that really the, the only one people know is pedophile. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it, but like you know, it's one of those things that I always put up as I will always be down to watch Willy Wonka before I ever watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I actively fucking hate Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Well, I will give you the original Willy Wonka. Um, so I've been recording for a couple minutes. I know. So now what are we going to do? Well, first we're going to talk a little bit, you know, kind of ease things That's in. That's what we just did. We talked a, we'll talk a little bit. How's your week going? How you doing? It's all great. Brandon, it's how fine. you doing? I had my big trip Friday. Okay, Dick Dickerson. How I'm you Dick doing? Dick Dickerson. I had my trip big trip Friday. That's awesome. I'm excited. You excited? Mm-hmm. You're flying, right? I got it out. Yeah, I'm not excited. I'm kind of excited, but not excited. Not flying. excited? I really don't enjoy flying. Like, it makes things so much quicker. I've just never had a good flying experience. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Mostly my tablet seems to always die right when you get out of the plane. Or, like, plane, I feel like planes, like, just suck the energy out of electronics. I don't know what it is. My tablet, yeah, like, weird. instantly died on well, the plane. I've occasionally and, been lucky enough to have those ones that have the USBs, like, in the seats. And then I always get the shittiest seats that's, like, right next to the engine. <laughs> and no matter how loud I turn up a podcast, I can't hear it or music, anything in my yeah whatever. And last time, it was only, I was a 30-minute trip between Detroit and, how was it, two hours between Detroit and Raleigh? I think it was maybe about two hours. So I guess it'll be this will be about as long as this trip. I don't know if I could do more than a two hour plane ride though. I've only I don't I just really dislike them. And I hate I'm an impatient person. 
And if you're an impatient person, flying is not good. Because you're supposed to be, like, in the airport two hours before you get on your plane. Which just makes no sense to me. I mean, certainly so. So, and so I have to leave 2 a.m. I have to get to the <laughs> Michigan Flyer at 2 a.m. Thursday night. Well, 2 a.m. Friday morning. Word. To get on my 6 a.m. flight. Friday, yeah, 6 a.m. Friday flight. But we get to the Detroit airport at 4.30, so I have an hour and a half in the airport at 4.30 in the morning. Which then, you know, you, you want to try and sleep, but you have crappy seats on the bus and on the and in the airport and then so you're just going to get that really <laughs> shitty half-assy sleep <laughs> that i'm still going to be exhausted when i get to the convention at 11 a.m and then i have like nine hours of magic the gathering tournaments and random shit in front of me that i want to try and enjoy but i'm going to be so, exhausted the so entire are you time. competing or are you just going there to see it no there's going to be so there's like panels there's a couple of panels that i signed up for there's two panels on. Are you hosting the panel? No. <laughs> We're going to see a Stan Lee panel. Oh, okay. Hopefully if we can get an autograph. That's pretty be cool. cool. Wait, why is, why is Stan Lee at a, at a Magic the Gathering thing? He's, well, it's a Has, it's Hasbro oh, convention, Has- remember? Okay. I thought I told oh, you okay. that. It's called Hascon. It's Hasbro's first convention. Hascon. <laughs> I feel like you could do, like, a real internet. <laughs> I Hascon. <laughs> um... So, yeah, but Magic, w- Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro. I think Stan Lee will compete. <laughs> so, He's no, like, I'll, I'll fucking probably... take on all of you bitches. <laughs> busy doing it. Well, there is a cool, it filled up really fast because it was free, obviously. I didn't know you'd have to, like, buy it, buy it so-called, with your ticket. They were free slots, and they called them Spell Slinger. They had some cheesy name, like Spell Slinger, blah, blah, blah. But you get to, like, compete against, like, Magic the Gathering staff. So okay. you'd have a chance to compete with, like, the... I guess he's the head designer? Like, the main guy in charge of Magic the Gathering is called Mark Rosewater. Word. And if you ever Google him, it's crazy. He's, like, a tiny, really short, really short man with a very high-pitched voice. Now, Mark, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, no, you're no stranger to, uh, to talking about Magic. Okay, so 1993 is the year Magic was released. Uh, first premiered at Origins, and then was on sale for the first time at Gen Con. It was a smash hit at Gen Con. It sold out in days. It's everything people were talking about. So Alpha came out. Then shortly after that, Beta came out. Then shortly after that, Unlimited came out, which was a whiteboard version of it. Uh, Beta added a few cards that were missed in Alpha. And then late in the year, Arabian Nights managed to come out. Like a, basically a magical gnome that creates magic the gathering is what you can think of Mark Rose well. Do it. Um, so we have t- two panels, and then we have tournaments, a couple of drafts, and you get three magic, like three random packs from any magic from like Magic the Gathering sets with the past, okay. I think, fifteen years, okay. which is gonna be pretty cool. And then the big thing is the release of iconic masters. So Magic. To kind of like milk every dollar out of Magic the Gathering Hasbro hat. Wait, is this now like re-releasing old fucking cards? They totally do. They just <laughs> they just re- they do uh, master sets during the summer, and they sell so a normal pack of Magic the Gathering sells for like three fifty right now, which back in the day it sold for like or it sells for almost four dollars now. It sold for like two fifty. Three dollars when I was in eighth grade. So inflation. If anybody wants a real world example of inflation, the price of Magic Gathering cards has shot up through the roof. Anyways, so Magic regular Magic cards sell for four dollars. Master sets sell for ten dollars a piece. Fuck. Yeah, it's Are the packs any bigger? No, same amount of cards, but it's shit. because they like reprint like really powerful cards that. Well, are you like guaranteed to get good shit out of it? I mean, not like. I don't know. I was kind of disappointed. Me and Wally split a box once, so a box of like thirty, because it really, when if you buy them in bulk from like websites, it really cuts down the per pack price. But it was still like probably a hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars we spent, uh, and we each got like fifteen packs, I think. Which was, worth it? Yeah, because I mean we split a, because we split the cost. If we got fifteen, ten, fifteen packs individually. Would have been like one hundred and fifty dollars. See, but like the one, like, the one thing I'm thinking about is like the randomness of packs. If I got nothing but shit, after no, yeah, I mean you things. can't, like, you can't go into it expecting that you're gonna pull like one powerful card and like get like, your money back you spent. Like that's never gonna happen because it's like, just not gonna happen. I don't know if you've ever the played. The odds are astronomical. Have you ever played that Blizzard card game? Uh, no, Hearthstone. No. 
so literally, mm-hmm. if you watch a stream pack, uh, I'm like mm-hmm. a stream of opening packs mm-hmm. when a new expansion comes out. This is a thing people do. They do it, it for Magic the Gathering on YouTube. I it think it's stupid. Totally I'm like, I don't know why the it's fuck. It's a great way to bring, bring up back your cost. I want to watch. The cost of opening all those I want to watch you open your own packs. It's just it's dumb in my opinion. But go on. <laughs> well, people love the mystery, you know? Oh, so They're just like, dumb. hey. I don't fucking mystery. love the mystery. What, it's any, stupid. What's wrong with the mystery? It's just stupid. It's Someone's just, just opening a pack stupid. of cards. Like, I can get the mystery by opening my own goddamn pack of cards. Well, what if you just watching a video of something of doing, somebody doing it just seems stupid to me. That's like but, a video of watching people open Christmas presents. Like, it would be just stupid. Well, what about grocery haul videos? You ever what? Watch those? Where people are really stoked because they bought, like, a lot of stuff on sale at a grocery? No. You've stupid. never seen grocery haul. No. I have That's some, like that. I have some things no, to show No, I don't you. need to. The internet's a scary place. I don't want to <laughs> go on to. Well, anyway, okay, so they so run it's the... It's like those shows of people that just do extreme couponing. Those shows are stupid, too. So they, they, they run the numbers on it, and to get, like, realistically get every single card in in a Hearthstone expansion, you have to mm-hmm. spend, like, close to three or four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Fuck. <laughs> like, That's really nothing. And, like, that one more than, like, I don't know so much about magics no. actually though but yesterday though i bought a pack and i pulled a card that was worth a hundred dollars that's pretty good did you immediately flip it <laughs> no i'm not gonna sell it i might keep it i don't know because it's part of For like, a rainy day <laughs> it's part of a really exclusive magic they're a little bit gimmicky they did like three sets of them and now they're gonna like do them more they're gonna do them less often to make them more special but they like reprinted cards with alternate artwork they called them a masterpiece series yeah so there were cards that were not, I could be wrong, I'm sure, they were not legal for termin- tournament play that that set is legal for, but um, but they like reprints of old popper cards with new art and like a new boxy frame and really shiny anything. Okay. So I probably got the best one or I think that's uh, the Mox, Mox Opal. But anyways. So I intended to originally announce this before the... <laughs> Let's see here. Like 12 minutes of magic. <laughs> do <laughs> ask. Um, I, I know. I, got to, no, I, totally no, I never did. even got to finish that. So, the, so I'm paying $60 twice to play in two Iconic Masters pre-release tournaments. Okay. I get three packs of the Iconic Masters set, but I, and I, and I get them. You keep them if you win. No, I get to keep all my cards by. But the cool part is these cards are being re-released. They're being released at HasCon two months before they go on sale. That's pretty cool. That's kind of cool, especially because so me and probably Wall- flip the packs even. Me like... and Wally are gonna uh, like be uh, doing a bunch of spoilers for our Facebook and our web page and our That's whole good. Uh, 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 website S- that we magic the gathering things. We're trying the to do. internet. Yeah, I'm gonna turn us all on the internet thousand airs. <laughs> <laughs> no thousand, girls, get off me. Thousand airs is a pretty good. Oh, what are you doing, Andrew? So anyway, welcome to Floating Up, uh, Floating Up Stream, Floating Up Streamcast podcast, Floating Up Stream podcast or yeah. cast? I don't what know. What's the, what's, the, what's the podcast? What's the industry term? What do industry people cast mean? technically is like the average thing people say now, just because like otherwise they know. Really, they're like, I have a cast. That sounds dumb. I well, never like heard the, they'll say. like for example, Giant Bomb the website uses Giant Bombcast, so people know what you're talking. about. Seriously, though, where did my drink go? Or Wavepoint like Presents. Am I actually being crazy? So anyway, this is episode one. We're watching The Founder. We're uh, not watching The Founder, apparently. <laughs> somebody already watched it without me. Well, you need a, you need a refresher course anyway, so... We don't have to watch it if you don't want to. You can just tell me your thoughts, because then they'll jog my memories, and I can talk about it. I mean, okay. From what I have. It's not that complicated. I did not, not that I did complicated not premise of a movie. Originally intend for all of this. In the meantime, I guess as far as my week, just to even things out here, I bought Movie Pass. I bought myself Movie Pass and I bought Kate Movie Pass. I bought Movie Pass. And Brandon bought Movie Pass because we bought Movie Pass. It turned Movie Pass ad managers, affiliate managers, <laughs> anybody that wants to throw money at us to mention Movie Pass as many times as we can in this podcast. I will do that I for will you. Currently, say we are not sponsored by <laughs> Movie Pass in any way, but not opposed to it. We are not opposed to it. No. Hi. Hey. Wink. <laughs> Sounds like a great service. Hey, I'm what, super what, excited. That story you sent me when Movie Pass first was a thing. What, 
It had the guy's name in it. It was, here's the blank person's crazy new idea. He's the co-founder of Netflix. Um, what the fuck is his name? I don't know. I only ever remember Harry, Harry Reid or Mark Reid. Something like that. It's Reid something, right? Is the Netflix something. founder. So, uh, but that's exciting. <laughs> and we hope to use that in the future for cool things. Also, Netflix marketers. <laughs> be like you do shout out Netflix <laughs> affiliate stuff has like pretty much gone away because they're like fuck these people we don't need internet people no, they don't, they please don't. keep paying for your subscription please <laughs> um so the founder mm-hmm. so no we should have gone over I meant to ask you and I didn't I wanted like I need you to set up I need criteria for me criteria yeah I need like stuff that I can rate or scale or Things like cinematography, like I need structure on how to critique a movie because I just don't know how to like just wing it. I mean, I'm fine with just winging it, I kind of, but I want like some things some, that I can some base things to that think I can, about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so one thing I would really say is, and it definitely is something I've noticed in recent years of like critique and general like media conversation, is not even so much like what the story is, but like the pacing like how well does it flow how well do you think it <laughs> sticks with you like do you feel do you feel is it like rushed is it like yeah like do you feel like all of a sudden like like the latest like, game of thrones that you don't watch game of thrones the latest i do game, watch game of thrones. oh you watch game of thrones hell yeah are you watch caught game up on game of thrones yes i am what how did i not do this okay it, so I guess I preface should... here we're about to spoil the shit out of game of thrones <laughs> for a minute if you don't want to hear that, I'm going to give a link to the exact time that it's safe to listen again. Dude, fucking zombie dragon is so fucking cool. No, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I don't know why I didn't think. Maybe because I thought Kate was so far behind. I didn't know you were. No, I've, I've always been keeping up with Game of Thrones. Um, that has always been something. Did I give you guys my HBO login? Did we not do that yet? Yes, no, I you did. did. Yes, you did. Are um, you watching the stupid behind the scenes thing? No, not at all. Because I... She watched one and I was like, boy, this seems like for someone else. Well, I didn't watch any of them, I haven't tried to watch any of Um, okay, side note, move on back to actually. Um, so, oh, but no, pacing, where I was getting. Yes. This episode, pacing was like. I feel like it was like. Turtle speed, the first three episodes, <laughs> and then like Corvette speed. For the like last a, four episodes. Dude, when every single character like, gains the ability to teleport across yeah. the continent. Yeah. <laughs> Which I understand, like, I don't want to watch, you know, Jamie Lannister and his army march for three hours or whatever. But they definitely, I don't know. I think they could have done more. I felt like it was really rushed in the end. But... Sure. I, I feel people like... kept saying, like, budgeting stuff, and I just never believed that. Because I was like, Game of Thrones prints money for HBO. I don't see why they couldn't give them more yes. money. Like, it seems absurd. And it's going to print money for them for years to come, even after the show ends. Like, So, but. like, the one thing I would really say about this season is it feels like a very different format to a lot of the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it comes with positive and negatives. Overall, I was pretty okay with the season as a whole. I, like, especially that episode, I want to say it was, like second or third episode before the end where they're all just sitting down in a meeting room for like most of the episode and they're like planning yeah, out their time and it felt really good mm-hmm. um also the part where uh what's her face and the hound no um uh there's the hound or whatever where like uh fuck what's her name alice Al- um yeah the, the one that was hanging out with the faceless man or whatever you know aria yeah aria when they assume me back are you? Oh, fuck. None of their names stick in my head. You know what's the one that stuck in my head? Ned. <laughs> Ned doesn't have a head. I know he doesn't. <laughs> that being said, like, I've been talking to some people about that, and, like, it's interesting how the show went in different directions from the books, because there's some stupid shit from those books that I forgot about. And I've... I didn't mean the book. Cool, because uh, there's zombie main characters that come back. Yeah, Catelyn Stark, made in Ironheart, or mm-hmm. Stoneheart, made in uh, Lady Stoneheart. And, Stone Stone and they're just like, I'm back now, but I'm a zombie and I'm evil. Yeah, there was, yeah, and she kind of, you know, she played with decent part. Yeah, there was some stuff that was really good. But... I totally think Ned Stark's alive, by the way. I think in the books it might be a thing. I don't know if it's going to be a thing in the I don't show. Know. He's... 
I was pretty convinced by the, I called that show's bluff in the first season when it first came out. And I was like, you're clearly not going to kill what's clearly the main character. And then, like, as his head is rolling down the steps, I was like, well, I guess I lost that one. <laughs> yeah, nobody, yeah, a lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, and then that's what got me to read all the books, actually. And, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've told them. Uh, I was, I've been telling people I want the beginning of the last season to be every single other character like gets their head punched off in the first like 45 seconds, and then all the other episodes are just like these camera pans to nothing where characters are supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, I'm ready for like a lot. By the time the next season starts, I am ready for, like, a lot of people to buy. Okay. So, anyway, now that it is, we are out of the Game of Thrones discussion for a moment there. Um, so, the founder. Mm-hmm. First thing I want to say is, god damn, Michael Keaton's a good actor. <laughs> I was just going to say he was a great choice. He's a fucking awesome choice. He did a good job in that one. He did so good. good. Very underrated actor, I think. Very underrated. Probably. I also think, like, I think, I'm assuming... Well, wait a minute. And Michael Keaton is not underrated. No, I heard of you. In the modern age, like, nowadays, I would say, like, he's a bit underrated. But, like, in his heyday, like, as Batman... Okay. He's a beloved actor. Yeah, okay, I guess so, I guess so. I was going to say, probably on his, he probably, he probably purposely does this, I'm going to guess, maybe. I feel like he doesn't do a lot of roles, so maybe that's what I, what I meant by underrated. Yeah, sure. I think he picks his roles carefully, and he does them good. Yes. So. Yeah, he, Michael Keaton as a whole really felt like Under, Underrated is not the word I'm looking for. Maybe, not obscure, maybe, I don't know. He's just not like he's not like in a movie every year. Yeah, like, you know he's saying? not like he's not... in the public zeitgeist of like yeah. amazing actors. Like yes. you don't think of like you think of like a Tom Hanks when you think of like yeah. a major heartwarming whatever, mm-hmm. all that shit. Speaking of Tom Hanks, so the director of this movie, I'm drawing a blank. I would say like John, it's like Hancock something, but uh, um, so he is also the guy that directed uh, the Rookie. The, uh, the Blind Side and uh, Saving Mr. Banks. He directed The Blind Side? He did. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, at this point, I would thoroughly say, and now that you know that, I think maybe, like, the format of the movie can kind of come to light a little bit more. Like, he has a formula at this point. Hmm. You know, it's this very, like, you start off with something a little quirky, you work your way into like maybe a tragic backstory or like a bit more about the history of the characters and heartwarming thing or some sort of like breakthrough and then it goes into like a dark uh a darker chapter near the end and then happy resolution or sad resolution whatever sure 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 the only movies i've seen of those is the blind side which i I could have sworn remember. you saw Saving Mr. Banks with me and Kate. What's Saving Mr. Banks? Maybe it's that movie either. about the lady that that wrote uh, that wrote the book of Mary Poppins. That it was, uh, and it's about Walt Disney trying to like. I've seen her it. I with didn't see it with you guys. But um, I can tell you that. Did you uh, see it in theaters? I didn't see it in theaters. I totally saw it. In no, if I rented it, so I didn't see it with you. I fucking love Saving Mr. Banks. It was so a really much. good. Tom Hanks did a great job. As yeah, well. just speaking of Tom Hanks, well, that's Tom yeah. Hanks is fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. And what's her name? Did a good job too. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Who is the... she? Who plays the one lady? Oh my uh... fucking god. Um... I'm pretty sure. Have you seen? You probably don't know if you guys have seen it. I need to get the DVD. Have you seen American Gods? Side note: American Gods is great. I'm pretty sure she plays an American God. I like watched one. like the first episode of. Mm. Of American Gods, I have not actually sat down. It's really good. Uh, so, but yeah, and you know what? Like the biggest tragedy about that movie is like, I love that movie to death, and it got and it won a single Academy Award, and that was for best original soundtrack. <laughs> huh. The Academy Awards did not fucking give a shit about Saving Mr. Banks. I don't think I think great movies don't need to get awards I don't know. no sure yeah. i just thought it was funny that like they were like get that shit out of my fucking face would you who do you probably emma know thomas okay you probably know um, emma thompson emma thompson, thompson. Yeah. 
And so you probably know, you probably already know this. It's either Academy Awards, Oscars, maybe it's Academy. I don't think the it's Academy the Awards are, uh, are the Oscars. Yes. Oh, they're the same thing. Yes. Oh, because you get an Oscar at the Academy Awards. Yes. Okay. Well, not maybe it is that one or just a different award show. Whatever award show it is, I was reading somewhere that's crazy. Like the only people that vote are, which is a weird, a weird random club. Are like the eighty members of the foreign movie press association or yeah. like the people that is that the academy awards uh there's that golden not golden globes that that's the, the emmys is that the emmys might be the emmys wait the emmys but are hmm. emmys are movies right emmys are tv um, there's isn't another movie award show besides well the, there there are there the are oscars there's a million of them and, but i mean like two, big ones big ones uh Whatever. Well, there's some award I show. I think it's the Academy where it's like the 80 members of the Foreign Net Movie Press Corps, which mm. is like a weird random group of people too. Interesting. And there's a whole. I read a Booker article about the whole like shady side of like studios oh, throwing like thousand dollar parties and these people getting like ten thousand dollar thank oh, you bags and other really let me crazy make this ridiculous ways clear. to bribe. Fuck all award shows ever. That song and. Pony show has been the thing forever. Fuck all of them. But it, actor or actors and they can it's really important to the those people. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's nice getting awards for your work. It's nice getting recognized for your work. Yeah, but I mean, it translates into direct dollars on your next project, yeah, like it for does. Because people still care about that shit. Yeah. Anyways. So, anyways. Um. <laughs> Lord. So, um, the one thing that I found kind of off-putting about this movie is at the beginning and end, they do a, uh, a House of Cards-esque, like, uh, Michael Keaton looks at the camera and goes like, you're not an idiot. You know, you know, that thing. <laughs> at first I was like, what am I signing up for here? I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, Nick Swartzen and, um, uh, and uh, some dude <laughs> are running the first McDonald's. Yeah. And... What's his name? He's like one of those people that you see everywhere, but you never remember. But he plays minor roles in like every movie. Uh, are you talking about... Uh, the guy got... that plays the other McDonald's brother. The, the the bald one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's... Uh, he's it's just one of those actors. He's just one of those guys. He's just yeah. one of those like, oh, he's a big goofy guy. Yeah, that's everywhere. Um, it was crazy seeing Nick uh, Swanson or whatever it is. Swarson, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was neat seeing him, and I was like, I swear to God, he took this role ironically. <laughs> um, and the fun part was, I liked the recreations of uh, the old uh, pictures of the first McDonald's and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. uh, that actually true story about them having to cut off the roof of the building to move the ba- building to uh, San Bernardino. Mm-hmm. Because fuck that stupid low hanging bridge that I think is still there actually. Mm-hmm. Um, that that stuff was all cute and even like the uh, the uh, the part where like they have the tennis court or whatever and they like mark out all the parts where the kitchen is and they have these like twelve idiots mm-hmm. going around bumping into each other mm-hmm. and being like you need to get this right. Um, and like the funny part is, as a person who has had a shitty job. <laughs> here and there um as someone who has worked at a mcdonald's it's actually really funny to hear some of this stuff and like mm-hmm. some amount of that stuff is still in like the corporate zeitgeist of that mm-hmm. place like thoroughly doesn't surprise me even just like the cap- the ketchup and mustard like dispensers that they use in the movie mm-hmm. are accurate to what they were using then and it's similar to what they have now it's just a shittier plastic version because why the fuck would you use metal at this, at this point it's expensive Mm-hmm. Um. So, <laughs> we made a joke about this before we started recording. Not a lot of uh, female roles. <laughs> Most of them were either told to be as smiley as humanly possible, jam as many teeth into that smile as you possibly can, or uh, Michael Keaton's wife who said, okay, so you're, like, a wife, but you're sad. <laughs> you're, like, really upset. And Which does that like, seem very happy for him? And she, like, did a frown. And he was like, okay, 
little more. And she's like, and then, and then she was like, just a little more. And, he, and she was like, uh, and he was like, perfect. Yes. You're horrible. God. You're horrible. <laughs> That's like all she does, and that's all like any woman. Besides well, I mean, he the... was treating her like crap. Sure, of yes, he was gonna be upset. If anything, that's the thing I'm impressed about with the movie was I was really expecting them to pull their punches with him in terms of like the shit he got up to here and there and mm -hmm. stuff. I'm like, no, they thoroughly go like, see, he was not a very attentive husband. <laughs> no, um, they did not. I will give him. Uh, I think I like that it was, how am I trying to say this? I think, like, business tycoons in America, generally, like, um, like Ray Kroc, um, who, the Colonel, yeah. the fucking Wendy's guy, the fucking yeah, I get, like, the, they get the, you know, these mythical personas and whatever built around them, yeah. that this movie did not paint a flattering a picture of Ray Kroc. No. And to the point that I'm actually sort of surprised they approved it. I mean, McDonald's couldn't stop them. Not necessarily, really. but they could have definitely been like, don't fucking show our logo in it. Um, Fuck you. <laughs> um, so I definitely, I kind of liked that. It was more real, like, painted a realistic human yeah. picture of Ray Kroc and, like, showed his flaws mm -hmm. and stuff. And now it's just like... He was an amazing businessman. He was really a kind of a crook and like a real shady, it's kind of a shitty, shitty person. guy. Like, like, at the end of the day, it's very neat to just see a movie go like, "Hey, these are people." Mm -hmm. Like, no one in this movie is necessarily like just a flat out villain. Like, "Aha, I'm gonna mm -hmm. take all the money," you know, like that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just see like, a, and like that's another thing I'd say is like with all of his movies. The Blind Side was for sports nerds. Uh, Saving Mr. Banks was for Disney nerds. And this movie is definitely for... The Founder is definitely for business nerds. Mm -hmm. It's for people that, like, love seeing the dissection of, like, acquisitions and just this right combination of people, ideas, mm -hmm. and technological advancements at just the right time mm -hmm. that make you... That result in, like, one of the biggest fucking things ever. Mm -hmm. It's neat to see. Mm -hmm. I definitely liked it. I yeah. Liked it. It's a very good movie. I'm glad you were able to uh, recall your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I do apologize. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you, tell you what, you get to pick the next the next movie coming out. It's fine. Or we'll, uh, I'll take can we say how, like, uh, Ray Crack totally, like, stole what's his name, White? Yeah, I fucking, I love how that happens off screen. You don't know if that dude's dead or divorced. <laughs> and with Ray Kroc, I also don't know. Yeah, no, there's kind of just like, uh, yeah, there's kind of just a point where she's like, they're in the hotel or together or something, and it like doesn't really ever explain or whatever. Um, Can I say, this is probably, I don't know if it's weird, there's probably other people like this. Some of these movies, though, I really, like, I was really hoping they were going to do one, and they did. Because if they don't do one, I get really ticked off. But movies like this, I almost wait the entire movie just to why I love the, like, last five minutes where they do a black screen and words that tell you what happened. Yeah, 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 I yeah. I love those parts of these types of movies. They're, like, my favorite thing. And oh, my It's really kind of cool to see. Because it's either the best or worst parts of the movie. Kind of, yeah. He made, like, a bajillion dollars. And, yeah, oh, my gosh, like, screwing when he told the McDonald's brothers, oh, don't worry, I'll write them to that contract. And then they're, like, their 1% stake would have been worth, like, $100 million was, a year. It was for like, a handshake deal, absurd. and they couldn't yeah. prove the handshake. And it was just, oh, my fucking God. It was God. so horrible. Like, like he was... <sighs> McDonald's Corporation has so much money, just really not to be able to... And, like, you know, it's even, really like... Uh, I guess the one part you could say where Michael Keaton is being the villain is when he's divorcing his wife, and he's like, I give, give her the house, the car, insurance, whatever... Yeah. I will die before she gets yeah. any stock in McDonald's. Yeah, that's such a <laughs> dick. Oh, man. He's 
such a dick thing to do. Um, I mean, yes, like him and what's her name gave like billions of dollars to charity. But yeah, I also like how they clarified makes, like, hey, makes up for the, everything. The lady but... he married to after he died gave a bunch of their money to yeah. NPR and charities yeah. and shit. Yeah. It's fine. I don't think either one of them is still alive, are they? I'm pretty sure. I don't. No, not Ray Kroc's not alive. Yeah, Ray Kroc died in the eighties. Yeah, I don't he's think super dead. His yeah. skeleton is dead. <laughs> 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 Or it's somewhere in McDonald's headquarters. <laughs> They're trying to clone him right now. McDonald's is headquartered in Chicago. Oh, is it? Lord. Uh, Illinois? Yeah. I think it's in Chicago. I don't I, know. I think it might be in Chicago. Or like in a Chicago suburb, because nobody... Yeah. ...does anything in... Chicago. We'll, we'll go with that, because that... It's not okay. like we have devices next to us that can yeah, like, answer well, all my questions. Phone, my phone does that. But fact checking ruins every podcast in existence. So, what's something you didn't like about the movie? Something I didn't like about the movie. There are, as a as a as a qualified cinephile, there are occasional scenes in this that I feel like were for, for you. the people who, can, since this is a podcast, I'm going to tell you that as Doug said, cinephile, I rolled my eyes. <laughs> I just need to clarify that. <laughs> just want to clarify, for the listeners. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. I feel like they were for me, and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, there's a part in that part where you all of a sudden realize he gets that, that guy's fucking wife or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's a part where he's walking away, and the camera zooms in on the mirror he was standing in front of practicing the speech, mm-hmm. and you just see like a blurred out version of him leaving the room. Mm-hmm. And it sits on that for about 30 seconds, and I said, oh, that's cute. I see what you're doing. No, thank you. <laughs> what were they doing? Don't, well, it's just this, like, kind of artsy nothing shot that makes you go, like, oh, you can kind of reflect on it for a minute. But, like, there's a way mm-hmm. better version of that earlier in the movie. Like, the part where, like, when he finally makes his move on the two McDonald's brothers, mm-hmm. and he goes, like, hey, you know, you guys are in the right, but I can push you out in court for literally ever. You're fucked. Oh, yeah. it's over yeah. Yeah. and like the brother or whatever like passes out and they're at the hospital mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and he walks in the room with a oh, fucking yeah. vase of flowers oh, and a blank mm-hmm. check and he's like you know are you feeling better just kind of let's talk mm-hmm. and they like leaves and they both just kind of sit there for a minute with like mm-hmm. their mouths open did, That's they rip, did they rip up the check or they... no they did not they that was that was part of the thing that led to them having the business meeting of like oh, yeah. we want a uh, uh, hundred million whatever well, they wanted a million dollars and then the one percent one thing. The 1%. He wouldn't give them the one percent. No. God. What a dick. Mm-hmm. But like, but like, that is a way better moment because it's a really great thing of going like. So did he do that out of honest concern? Is he really that much of a monster that he shows up immediately after putting someone in the hospital to say, I want you out of my life? Like, it's a way better, like, you can think about it moment Mm -hmm. as opposed to just fucking nothing sitting at a fucking mirror. Look at how far jack off with us here. Throw in a hand, you know, that kind of... Oh, man, when he... Uh, when he builds a McDonald's right across from their McDonald's. Oh, my and God. Going, oh, God. And they have to that's rename a, their thing to the Big M oh, or whatever. Yeah. He's such a... God, no. that's a really... That's a pretty villain moment, though. That is. That's that a is. pretty... So, if anything, and I And I love saying, the... I yeah. love when he, like... Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, man. I think it's kind of... I feel like it's when, like, the... It's kind of the part in the movie where, like, the villain... Describes his evil plan or whatever. Yeah. When he's at the shop and talking to them or something, and he was like, or the guys were like, "Why?" He's like, "We're like, we've taught you everything." He's like, "But they're like, why didn't you just steal it and you know make your own thing or whatever?" And he was like, "He was like, anybody could do that." And he's like, "Everybody's tried that." And he was like, "He was like, it was McDonald's." He was like, "It was that wholesome family name that I needed." And now I have it. Ha, 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 ha. It's so... But it's so real, too. No, because no. you hear it and you go, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Because, like, all those other, like, competing restaurant names and that fucking thing sucked. No. Who wants to go to Griffith's for a fucking burger? Yeah. Or, like, you know, that other idiot... They really do a good job of also painting, like... Boy, the average person running a drive through restaurant had no fucking clue what they were doing. Mm. Who the fuck would get a brisket at a goddamn drive-in? I mean, I love when he chews out those 
like old guys from the country club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what the fuck are you doing what, selling what fried chicken at my burger place? <laughs> yeah. He was like, he's like, people like fried chicken. He's like, that's not the fucking point. And then, it's a burger joint, not a fucking KFC. And then the true hero of the movie, the fucking Weasley kid from The Office, that uh, is that banker or whatever. Oh my gosh, and yeah. He's like, you're in the wrong business. Mm-hmm. And then like, he's reveals, like, you need to be in real estate. Or whatever it is. Fuck. And like, yeah, that's the perfect way. The whole time I was like, you know, in the back of my mind, because I was thinking about it, I was like, Mm -hmm. you know, if he just owned the land that they kept picking out, that would solve a lot of his problems. And then all of a sudden he's like, so, you're in the wrong business. I'm like, oh! Yeah, no, that's so legit. Yeah, I think, I think behind like, behind like, probably in the top five, or I think it's like the Catholic Church. And then, like, McDonald's for the largest single land-owning organizations in the world. Yeah. It's it's scary on the one hand, and then kind of fascinating on the other. As an employee, I guess, I don't know if you know your owner or whatever, does, like, does McDonald's, like, own the land that your guys' building sits on? Yes, they do. That's so crazy. Uh, The actual person... And then you lease lease it to them. You lease it from them, I assume, how it works? We lease it from them. Yeah. Uh, the, the ownership of that lease has transferred about three times in two years, Mm -hmm. uh, because there was one guy that was there forever. He was an old shitty fuck Mm -hmm. and an awful person and I hated him and I'm glad he's gone. Uh, then it switched to another person of the same name, which I thought was funny. And he did a relative or no, completely separate person. Uh, pretty young actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, and his response was, I don't like how his team works. And then he left. And now it's run by like a like a thirty two year old. He's pretty young actually, and his name is like uh, Jim or something. But uh, he's very tidy. He's a pretty nice guy. Does it take a lot to buy a McDonald's? To buy a McDonald's, I get the impression no. Really? Yeah, it's a stressful fucking job. But like besides that, I get the sense that it's not actually that expensive. In relative terms. No, I think it's like 1.5 million, though. I mean... It's something like that, yeah. But, like, I mean... I mean, I mean... Well, at the same time, though, like, even a moderately successful McDonald's fucking... No, I guess so. Yeah, I know. I know. It takes, like, 500,000 for a Little Caesars. Yeah? Depends. Most of it is if you're, like, building... Is that a month Most or of, a year? Like, your first-time cost. Oh, your first-time cost. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, uh... The Little Caesars strategy for making money is they own the, which McDonald's still probably does this too, they They own own the... Low-income areas. No, (laughs) that's horrible. Kind of true. (laughs) They own the, like, they own the distribution. So, like, Beeline, Little Caesars, well, Illich Holdings, the big company that owns Little Caesars and Red Wings and Tigers and everything else in Detroit, they own Blue Line Distribution, which sells all the franchises, all their shit. That sounds cool. And that's who you have to contract with. And they actually, though, they used to do all of the Michigan subways, too. Blue Line did. So they sell to other restaurants as well, so the, yeah. their business model. See, I feel like that's what this movie is for, is for people that find these kind of conversations interesting. So I'm, a bit, I'm an accounting major, so that's obviously partly well, you, why you, you I love... you kind of signed that up. Partly why I love the movie. But, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. What's that one kid been in, the banker? He's been in things before, too. He is. You know? He's from The Office. He's, oh, he's from The Office? I didn't know. That's yeah, not where I've he's ever the seen the him Weasley, He's the Weasley little intern that eventually, like, smuggles, like, a lot of money for the company. And then eventually, mm-hmm. like, they're so low staff, they end up, like, hiring, mm-hmm. uh, hiring him again. <laughs> um, I think his unsung hero is his secretary. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, I love how they, uh, I gotta love the part where he, like, mind fucks them by sending them the, uh, oh, the, the, the strawberry, shake, the, shake, the strawberry shake, shake. oh my god, that's so, that's so funny, oh, it's so good, oh, uh, I totally love how, oh, BJ Novak is the, is the mm. guy from The Office, he was also, he was in Inglorious Bastards, Mm. Amazing Spider-Man 2. He was in Saving Mr. Pitt. Right, yeah, he was one of, uh, one of, Imagineers, uh, right, yeah. or animators or Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. And then, mm-hmm. uh, Knocked Up. Hmm. Yep, I know who he is there. Um, I was just gonna have something. Oh, I can, you can totally, I think at the piano thing, or when he's talking to, what's his name? I do like, though, kind of to contrast, though, he said not strong women roles in the movie, though. 
It's like the one wife kind of played like not dumb. Dumb is the wrong word to use in this context. She played a stereotypical housewife, not a dumb housewife. Stereotypical housewife. And then the other girl was like an ambitious, smart, whatever, like the one franchise guy's wife. Mm-hmm. I think it was like an interesting contrast to to roles that women have. Yeah, I'm kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, uh, it was. Yeah. I kind of like you could totally like. I don't know. I think you could see like the sparks between them at that first meeting, or like I don't know. You could see. I think that they. I think. I would obviously don't know in the real life. I feel like he. He legitimately valued her opinion. And yeah. I kind of think that was. I think they portrayed sure. that in a good. They yeah. showed that in the movie that he was like, "You're a smart lady. You know business things. I'm li- going to listen to you, and I'm going to marry you." So, like, there are little cute scenes in the movie that I think are definitely like very similar to things that I feel like I could have seen saving in Saving Mr. Banks. It feels like Saving Mr. Banks is just happening somewhere off screen. In this <laughs> but uh, would have been the same time frame, wouldn't it? Ish, yeah. Um, within like 10, 15 years, something like that. Uh, so like there's that really cute scene where her and him are, uh, singing, uh, Pennies from Heaven or whatever, oh, yeah, and they're like playing on the piano. Answer, yeah. It's kind of cute. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird because he's like making like real, like, uh, eyes at like yeah. somebody else's wife and, uh, but, uh, it's, it's pretty cute. And, uh, the only other thing I would say is Michael Keaton is like just a hair on the side of of not being able to play, like, even remotely middle-aged men anymore. I think he's, like, <laughs> just on the verge of, like, you need to play old people. You're almost in the De Niro, like, frame of, mm. like, you can't play, like, a spry chicken. <laughs> you can't even play, like, a guy coming back from his, like, midlife crisis anymore. You are you are in the post. <laughs> you are mm. over the other end of the fence there. It's okay. Now we can make movies with... Uh... Spider Man, Morgan Freeman, <laughs> and the yeah. other old guys. I want to kind of want to see that Bank Heist movie, right? yeah, like Red Box Theater when it comes on. Yeah, I'll watch all the movie. Can I just say I just watched on HBO Driving Miss Daisy, like two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. And can I say that I feel like Morgan Freeman has always been old. He is old. Like that movie came out long time ago, and I feel like he looks just like he looks. Last time I saw him in a movie, totally. maybe I was like, he just always looks old. Like when did he? I don't know when he started his acting career, but that's a wonderful question. To yeah. be perfectly honest, um, I would actually like to know that too. <laughs> um, but because uh, anyway. that's one of his first movies, I don't think he was big yet, was he? Or... I don't think so. Uh, let's... Seeing him and what's his name in that movie that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, He's kind of not really famous anymore. I always remember him because I used to love him and Chevy Chase playing that ridiculous spy movie. We should do that movie. Do you know what I'm talking about? They play, like, CIA agents during the Cold War. Spies like us, I think. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's a funny movie. Yes. Okay, so, wow. The first movie he did was in 1980. Mm-hmm. Uh, Burbaker. Hmm. And then, let's How old see. was he? Is the same? Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Well, let's. This one is going to do some math here. He was born in thirty-seven. So he was 19- born in nineteen thirty-seven. Yeah. So. Good Lord. He, so yeah, he was old when he started doing movies. Yeah, nineteen eighty, he'd been forty-three. Yeah, Jesus. Hmm. What the hell? Late bloomer. And, uh, let's see. It looks like the first, yeah, the first actual major hit he had was Driving Miss Daisy. I guess the saying is true, black don't crack. Black don't crack, dude. It fades slightly, but that's very slightly. (laughs) Unless you're, unless you're, unless you're the president, because Obama did not age well. No, he didn't, but, like. eight years, like, damn. You know, if you put up with, like, a straight, like, like. Eight years of get that fucking shit ass fag loving out of the whoa 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 out whoa, of the whoa. White House. <laughs> Do you honestly think that's not shit that he was? <laughs> no, I'm just dealing with that shit constantly. You just gotta watch your language. That antichrist Muslim loving fucker. <laughs> Better editor bleep some of that shit. 
I'll, I'll put something there. <laughs> but, you know, that kind of stuff. No, I yeah. understand why he aged the way he did, but... <laughs> You did not have a kindness of endorsement. I can't wait to make you listen back to that part after I, after I edit it. I've got some good ideas. There you go. So, so that's um, our final verdict. Our final verdict. How many pimply faced Calgary. teenage food fast food clerks out of five are we going to give it? I give it. Hang on, I've got I've got a thing here. Do a drum roll it, sound effect. Yeah, I'll add in. I'll add in. Uh, add in a, a drum, drum roll, roll sound effect. So I give the founder. I give the founder seven McDonald's roofs out of out of ten. <laughs> McDonald roofs. McDonald when they cut the building in half and they move. Uh, why can't you just done golden arches? Why do you have to be difficult? Well, you have to. Well, okay. I give it seven passed out brother blank checks. I took your royalties because you couldn't prove <laughs> the handshake. <It's> horrible. <laughs> Seven unproven handshakes out of ten. <laughs> How about you? I'm gonna give. Oh my gosh, you're horrible. I'm gonna give it five McDoubles out of five. Five McDoubles out of five. Nope. Which is ten patties out of ten. Damn. See what it is there. Damn. I. It's mostly because. I'm a business geek, so it really yeah, it, it speaks to you. touched all the right spots for me. Speaking personally, I enjoyed the movie a lot, but Saving Mr. Banks is is a movie I would watch literally right now. Mm-hmm. Whereas The Founder is something I feel like I would need to be a tad more like... It's also a tad longer than than uh, than Saving Mr. Banks. Uh, not that I'm saying... I, I think it was... Even, I think there is a little... You could have shaved some things off. It was a little... Like, I can't think of any longer. individual thing that I would have cut out, but, like, as a whole, I would have appreciated it. But I think, yeah. Attached. I think there's some scenes that could have been... I think there's some scenes that, if I had never known they existed, like, it wouldn't have made a difference in yeah. the movie. If they were cut out, I think I would notice, but if they were never put in there, I don't think it would ruin the flow for me. It's a similar thing to Detroit of, like, probably a weird balance of, like, so what do we assume the audience knows and what do we assume they don't know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyway. So yeah, that's the founder. Uh, we have I, have. I personally have literally no idea what we're gonna do for the next episode. It's it's in Brandon's wheelhouse because I because I fucked this one up pretty hard. That's fine. Do you work so, tomorrow? I do work. Tomorrow. What time? Eight thirty to five. Oh. Yeah. I was saying I was like we could just knock it out right now. That did that uh. Tune movie is on Netflix. I don't. Did you know it was on Netflix when you suggested it? Oh, uh, Louis did, back in yeah. action. Yes. Oh, okay. We, do you want to do that? I'm totally ready to do that. Okay, we'll do that. Or if you want to do it after work, I don't work tomorrow, so I'm really you know, okay. No, so up to you. I will hit you up. I will hit you up after I'm out of work and then like I get Lennon and then we will sit down okay. and we'll do that. Okay. Text me when you leave work and I will get pizza and meet you here. Yeah. Or Sounds I'll text K two and see if maybe she's interested in doing that too. I okay. don't remember her interest level in, in Looney Tunes back in action. I love any movie that is cartoon and live action. Well, she loves anything with Brendan Fraser in it, so... Of course she does. <laughs> you don't... You don't love The Mummy? Actually, the, the old Mummy's way better than the new Tom Cruise Mummy. From what I've heard. So. I'm, I'm curious... I'm a little curious about that, more just because now they're setting up the, the universal cinematic universe and like except for I don't know if they're going to after how much the mummy bombed yeah, the mummy I think they lost mummy on the mummy the or mummy they barely did. broke even Jesus Christ the market has spoken if you were putting out a movie with mummies in it put Brendan Fraser in it <laughs> I have to say I only can judge it by the trailer but like the it's one of those movies where I think they put uh, all their budget went into special effects and none went into writers that could develop a plot is what I think the yeah. trouble with that movie is. Basically, yeah. They were like, let's make it splashy and whatever we can because kids, millennials love that stuff. <laughs> like, no, we still would like a plot. We would, we would enjoy. And it. just because you throw Tom Cruise in it, it's kind of a has been. Can be real honest, Tommy. I'm sorry. Even though I just watched Minority, I was just trying to watch. I was trying oh, to rewatch sorry. Minority Report. Well, I'm surprised you were able to get through that, considering like that can sometimes look a little grainy and like. Not amazing movie. I love Minority Report. I'm a big fan of Minority Report. 
Oh, I I didn't fa- I can't pause halfway through. I don't that's, think that's I'll, fine. I don't think if I'll it didn't finish. if it didn't grab you in like twenty minutes, honestly, I would say don't watch it. But um, I mean, I've seen it all before. I just think I'm not good at rewatching movies. If you like things like that, I would suggest. Um, oh God! Oh God! Ah, uh, it's all going wrong. Um. Nah. Oh, it's gone. Oh, upsetting. Have you seen Ex Machina? Yes. Have we ever talked about Ex Machina? No, it's a good movie. That is a good movie. Boy, you could easily spoil the shit out of that movie like, <laughs> in like a sentence. <laughs> but, um, so anyway. Uh, so Daenerys the... Stormborn robot. Bam. Yeah. They... <laughs> I'm going to have to censor out that part. <laughs> I mean, that's not a spoiler. They already know she's a robot. You sure, though? What if she's actually the human and everyone else is the robot? Right. It's Matrix all over again. Have you seen The Most Violent Year? I don't think so. I really like What's His Name. Most Violent Year. Mm-hmm. It has the Rogue One pilot guy. Oh, shit. I and meant the to guy watch... from Ex Machina. I meant to watch that. I have not seen that yet. It's not as violent as the as the uh it's not as violent as the title of make it think it was huh which is really interesting i think there's i can't make up my mind about dunkirk one death yeah wow two, two huh. deaths i mean are they big i don't know i don't entirely deaths? get it. it's called the most violent year because it takes place during the year in which chicago had the highest murder rate it's ever had it was like 1982 or something. But I don't think that's but it doesn't, accurate anymore. <laughs> but it doesn't. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. But it doesn't have anything to do. But like I said, there's like two. I don't know. I don't entirely get yeah. the movie. It's a little probably out of my. I'll, I'll uh, whatever. I'll look into that. I can't make up my mind about Dunkirk. I haven't seen Dunkirk. Did you see it? Are you just debating if you want to see I'm it? I'm debating if I want to see it. I guess Movie Pass, like as a convenient and awesome service. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I can see a movie every day. It. Uh, I guess it takes some of it out, but I just I can't really because that first trailer for Dunkirk <laughs> looked. Shut up. Uh, Look, I'm not it's a, very bold. I'm not like, a war movie person. So I am I also know. not a war movie person, but mm-hmm. like, what the fuck else? I really want. I kind of wanted to see Dark Tower, but now like the reviews on it have kind of ruined it for me. I'm kind of really aggressively low. Yeah, <laughs> like not like, astonishingly low, but like low. Yeah, like I how expensive might, that movie looks. Yeah, I think I might just wait for the. TV series sounds like it's going to be better. Is it a Netflix or regular TV series? Do you know? Or, I don't know. But you don't have heard know. there's a series, right? I'm, yeah, I'm I have heard there. there's a series, yes. I hope. I think that probably might look better. It, it might be better. I'm not a huge McConaughey fan either, so I don't know. I think anything with McConaughey is bound to fail, which is my opinion. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> he keeps right, getting... All right, all right. Oh, God. <laughs> Somehow he still keeps getting roles. There's a, there's a movie he actually plays in where uh it's like uh he's like a rodeo star or something and then like he gets like one of those he gets aids but i forget like what the context for it is i don't remember what the name of the movie is but, is that uh, the no that's not it. what's dallas buyers club dallas buyers club oh, that's it is? Okay. that is what it is i don't remember what on earth that movie is about it's but he has aids in it Oh. Every singular line Matthew McConaughey says, I am able to predict before he says it. When I was first watching that movie, it was kind of weird. Because he weird. walks into a house and I go, that's a big ha- uh, not a big place you got here. And then like three seconds later, I'm not shitting you, Matthew McConaughey goes, big place you got here. <laughs> what? What's happening? <laughs> so I'm just having like a horrible like crisis the whole time I'm watching this. You watched Twin Peaks? No. I told you this. Season, season three is ending and it's awesome. It's, is it on Showtime? I don't have Showtime. Uh, sure, but Dark Wizards can come to you at any point and well. offer you things. I'm not going to take it first. We should do a. Um, I, want, I like segments. I'm a fan of segments. You I like know segments? you don't like segments. I, I like can segments. enjoy segments if we have a plan for said segments. I think just random segments. No, like, I wanted to do like a series spotlight segment. Like I'm a big fan of that. What is that? You're a you were a journalist major. What's the when you do the letter in the letter? It's the, called a something. 
Oh, uh, like, uh, Great sub- Gatsby, like two, the GG, the BBs, the oh, oh, um, um, um the Marmanam, Harmanam, Harmony, Ellipsy, the well, what's like it's called? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say ellipse. <laughs> a hom- homonym? It's not a homonym. That's no. a word. I don't know, but anyways, it's a anyway, thing. It's a that, marketing thing. That thing. Anyway, series spotlight. We could highlight series Ooh. people should watch. Ooh. My series. I'm gonna just start right now. The Ozark. Oh, Netflix. Oh shit! It's really great. Jason Bateman plays a money launderer from Mexican cartel. He's like, I need all the money. And I've heard it like is some a, really strong comparisons to Breaking Bad. Would you say those are accurate? I haven't seen Breaking Bad, but it's oh, a crime me show. I know I'm one of those. Anyway, okay, so the Ozarks. If you can get get go through, you gotta get through the first two episodes, and then because I, I heard it takes off after it's, good. it's a bit of yeah. a slow boil at first. Yeah, I don't know if Kate continued watching or not. My so my too. series spotlight. I'm gonna add like a really fun like music cue here. Yeah, okay, good. Um, I didn't say you get to do one. Oh, I don't. So get that's for next to... oh. episode. Oh shit! <laughs> I only get to do one period. Fine, fine, go ahead. I guess so. Mine's gonna Try be to a, steal a, my spotlight. Uh, mine's gonna be an anime thing. Mine, so one I would recommend, My Hero Academia, uh, is sort of a. It's a very interesting anime where it actually takes a lot of inspiration from. It's on Netflix. Isn't it? My Hero Academia. Uh, maybe. Um, I feel like I just saw something like that. But uh, it takes a lot of very serious inspirations from it. There it is, right there, uh, from American comic books hmm. and like uh, like masked superheroes. Stole my spirit, my serious spotlight segment. You just completely ganked it out from underneath why, me. Why did I take it away? Because I thought you were gonna give like two, three serious suggestions. I oh, only two, gave three. one. And then you just give like these nine anime suggestions. Oh, this was supposed to be like a two oh, minute segment. Oh no! Not like re- like a re- <laughs> well, like a whole nother well, podcast. I'll, I'll edit out the little bits there, and it'll just be a fast little thing. It'll just say oh. it'll just say Ozarks, My Hero Academia. I think my I think my my uh, my persona gimmick is gonna be talking in third person because Dick Dickerson is not happy right now. <laughs> well, Dick is angry. It's an angry dick. It's an angry dick in the room. <laughs> oh, stop. Schlong Schlanders. <laughs> Strong Schlanderson is not happy. <laughs> I feel like your persona should just be like Steve. <laughs> just Steve. <laughs> Steve and Dick. <laughs> uh, huh. uh, Steve and Dick are I'm, on the road again. Okay, so. Oh, God. Boy. Um, do we have any, like, closing thoughts? Did you hear the theme song that I put in for the final recording of the first episode? Maybe, I don't know, I might not pay attention. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'm not in the it. first, like, ten minutes, so I don't really, I don't really that, listen. That's fine. I need to figure out some music that I can play, like, mm-hmm. as I, like, kind of mid-cut out in the middle of one of us saying a sentence or something like that. To close the show, we're going to begin the show. <laughs>